Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the new Star Wars The Black Series 4 inch Ray figure from Hasbro. Now, this figure is a Walmart exclusive, as is all the 4 inch Black Series figures now. Comes packaged in that same style of packaging we've seen with the other Black Series. You've got the black box, the red background, the figure clearly displayed, the image of the character down below, along with the name. On the side, we have the red border with the 4 inch figures. They're not numbered, we just have the assortment number. And then on the back, we have a brief bio in multiple languages. Okay, so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging along with her accessories. Now, there's still a lot of mystery surrounding this character, even if you've seen the Force Awakens movie. We still don't really know who she is, where she's from. I have my suspicions. I'm sure you do too. But anyway, the figure itself comes with three different accessories, all of which were seen on the planet Jakku um, when we first are introduced to the character. So she's got this backpack that she can wear and it's just a brown plastic, not a lot of paint details on it. Um, she has the little water canister attached to the side that we see her drinking from in the movie, and it's not removable and just done with a silver metallic paint. The straps on the bag are um, adjustable, so you've got little three holes on each strap, and so you can adjust it to make it looser or tighter, depending on how you want. And you may need to do it looser if you're going to put it on when she's got the mask, and, and then tighten it up when if you want to put it on when she doesn't have the mask. And the easiest way to get her to put it on is just to uh, put it over her arms, um, and, and it fits pretty uh, tight. Again, a little bit depending on how you adjust those straps. Now the other uh, accessory that she comes with is the mask, the little uh, mask that you see her wearing when we first see the character in the movie when she's scavenging around the Crash Star Destroyer um, to protect her face from sand and stuff basically. So it's essentially almost like an alternate head. So what you do is you just pop off the regular head and then you sh uh, put it over her one arm and then just push it over the ball joint and it acts as basically a second head. Now, when you have this mask on, she has no articulation at the neck. Um, she does have a waist swivel, so she can turn at the midsection, but, but there is no articulation on, the, on this mask. It's just a rubber material um, that fits over, basically, the ball joint. And pretty nice detailing with the goggles. You've got some silver, metallic silver and brown and black on the goggles, and then the, the wrappings are just kind of the cream color, and then you've again got some uh, detailing here on her shoulder pad, which is brown with a little green in it. So overall, nice detailing with that. And you can, um, you can put the backpack on her, um, when she has this mask on, you want to put the mask on first and then you want to uh, loosen, make sure the straps are as loose as possible and then you can put it on her and it will fit pretty good even with the mask on. The final accessory that she comes with is the staff that you see her have basically throughout the movie, um, which I thought was kind of odd. Um, you know, obviously this is something you could see her having picked up at some point and, and made into a weapon, you know, there on the desert of Jakku, but I don't know why she chose to carry this thing everywhere. Um, even at the end of the movie, when she goes to meet that someone special, you see her still carrying it. So I thought that was kind of odd, but the staff, and I don't know if this is supposed to fire lasers or anything. I don't think we, I think you just see her use it briefly as a staff and that's about it. But it's done with a dark gray color for the actual staff. You've got some uh, white, white, wrappings um, down here along with some darker green ones and then the strap itself that goes over her shoulder is done with a cream color and it's kind of that uh, flexible uh, rubber type material. The staff itself is fairly soft plastic and a little, comes out of the package a little warped but it's not too bad and you can just uh, put it over her uh, shoulder uh, you can have her hold it in her hands as well but in the movie she pretty much just has it you know carrying it over her shoulder like this throughout most of the movie. Okay, so for the figure itself, I think they've done a pretty nice job with the sculpting detail. Paint applications are okay. I don't really like how they've put a lot of blood, looks like a lot of blush on her face. Um, and her face skin tone is maybe a little pale. But otherwise, I think the face sculpt is pretty good, especially for a figure this size. I think they've gotten the likeness of the actress pretty good with it. Hair, the way it's sculpted, I think looks good. And it's just done with brown paint. There's no wash work or anything in it. And then she's got the cream color uh, for most of the outfit that she wears. 
looks like maybe a little bit of wash uh, mixed in with the skirt piece that goes down, uh, droops it down the front of her legs. And then she's got the brown belt with the little pouch on the back. Got the beige color gloves and then the wrappings that go up almost to her shoulder. But you got a little bit of skin tone showing between the, the shirt and the wrappings on her arm, just like you see in the movie. So I think that all looks good. And then she's got the pants that comes down to her knees and then the brown shoes. Now besides the blush on her face, the only complaint I have with paint applications is on, on the hinge joints on her feet, it does not look like they painted those hinge joints the same color of her shoes. So if you bend the feet down at all, then you've got those exposed joints which look a little funny. And then same with the knees. Um, the knees are pretty much hidden by the pants unless you bend the knees and then you can see those joints. And you can see that they are not painted a skin tone, they're painted the same color as the pants. And so they look a little bit off. You got some sloppiness there as well, not just on the joint, but on the leg itself. Now it's not noticeable really when you have the legs straight, but when you have her bend the knees, you definitely notice that, and it's on both knees. Okay, so the figure stands three and three quarter inches tall. She's in pretty good scale with the other figures in the line. So here she is next to Finn, and she's a bit shorter than Finn, as she should be. And then also here she is next to Poe Dameron, and Poe is a little bit taller than her as well. So articulation is pretty good on the figure. Uh, the regular head is just on a ball joint, so she can look left and right. As I said, that masked head does not have any articulation at the neck. She also has pretty good up and down movement with the regular head, um, which is nice and she can kind of pivot her head to the left and right as well. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joints at the shoulder so she can get her arm out good and she's got good rotation there at the arm. She does not have a bicep swivel but she does have the swivel at the elbow. It's a single hinged elbow but she can still actually bend her elbow pretty good. She's got the swivel at the wrists and she also has hinges on her hands so she has good up and down movement with the hands at the wrists. She has a midsection joint so no ab crunch but she does have the rotation there at the midsection. Legs are attached with those hinge joints like we've seen with all the figures in the line. And she has these skirt pieces that come down and the one on her left leg does limit a little bit how you can, much out you can do the leg, but not too much. Uh, you also have rotation there where the leg meets the waist piece and you can get the leg pretty forward, uh, forward pretty good, though you kind of have to uh, get it in between those skirt pieces to get her leg forward and she can do her leg back a little bit but not too much. You kind of have to do the leg out and back if you want to do her leg back at all. Single hinge knee so she can bend her knee about that much and then she's also got the rotation there at the knee and then the feet are attached with your standard hinge joints so she's got good up and down movement with the feet and she has rotation there at the feet. She does not have ankle pivot though and then two peg holes on the bottom of her feet. Okay, so that's my view. Overall, I like the figure, I like the look of it, I like the articulation, and I like the accessories. I like how they did the mask, the alternate mask head and everything. Other than a few minor uh, gripes with the paint applications with the joints and a little bit too much blush on the face, I think this is a nice looking figure and will make a nice addition to your collection. Now this figure is part of the Walmart exclusive Black Series line from Hasbro. It's the third wave, which is hitting, starting to hit shelves now. We'll have a full gallery of images up at JediInsider.com. There's a link in the description below. Also, be sure to check out GTPtoys.com. They specialize in Star Wars backdrops. Uh, so some of the backdrops that you're seeing in these images of like the Death Star lighting and stuff, that's, part, that's from GTPS Toys. So if you like those, be sure to check those out. And we'll have a link in the video description to them as well. Also, as I mentioned earlier in the review, I have my suspicions on who this character is, actually, and I would definitely love to hear your all's theory. So, spoiler alert, my theory is he's related to Luke Skywalker. The lightsa whole lightsaber thing, you know, the lightsaber that belongs to Anakin, or originally belonged to Anakin, and then Luke, and now has somewhat, somehow found its way to, to Rey, um, and is really kind of like calling to her says to me she's got to be a Skywalker and so I don't know if like Mara Jade or somehow is going to fit into all this and, and her and, and Luke had a kid at some point in the 30 years between Return of the Jedi and now but definitely I think she's got some kind of relation to Luke so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and as always leave a comment let us know what you think if you're so inclined please like the video and if you haven't already please subscribe and until next time I'll catch you later